Welcome back to this online lesson on oligopoly. In this session, we're going to explore a model that is called the kink demand curve. And this is a way of explaining behavior in an oligopolistic market. A business in an oligopoly faces a downward slope demand curve, but the price elasticity of demand may depend on the likely reaction of rivals to change in one firm's price and output. Let's have a little bit of thinking time. Imagine you're a car manufacturer making mid-sized family cars. So something like a VW Golf 4 or Ford Focus, let's say. Now you've got a significant market share. There is a stable market share and a price structure for the industry. So what I'm saying here is that the market share doesn't change very much. Each firm's market share within the industry has remained relatively consistent over a given period of time. And prices are relatively similar as well. So all manufacturers charge similar prices for similar cars. One of your competitors decides to increase their prices by 10%. How will you react? Will you change your price or not? Pause now and have a little think to yourself what you're going to do. What were your thoughts? So let's have another thing. Now imagine that that competitor reduces their price by 10%. How are you going to react this time? If you reduce yours by 10%, then what's going to happen to the level of supernormal profit that you earn? Will your rival decrease them by a further 10%? And how's that going to impact upon your ability to, uh, let's say, break even or make a profit? Now, this is where the model of the kink demand curve comes into play. So there are a number of assumptions in the kink demand curve model. Firstly, rivals are assumed not to follow a price increase by one firm. So the acting firm will lose market share and hence demand will be relatively elastic and a rise in price will lead to a fall in total revenue. So that's a bit of a year one early microeconomics concept in terms of the impact of a change in price when we've got a given price elasticity of demand, in this case, elastic. The second assumption that the kink demand curve model makes is that rivals are assumed to be likely to match a price fall by one firm. Why is this? To avoid a loss of market share. If this happens, demand will be more inelastic and a fall in price will lead to a fall in total revenue. So what the model is trying to tell us is that there's a little incentive for any firm in the industry to change their price as it's likely to lead to a fall in total revenue. So prices tend to remain stable. And this is why it's called the kink demand curve and we can show it with this kink. So the theory starts with the assumption that firms are settled on price P1 and quantity Q1. The demand curve is price elastic above P1 and price inelastic below P1. If the firm chooses to raise prices above P1, the likely reaction of other firms is to hold their prices. This will cause an elastic response for this firm, ultimately resulting in lost sales and falling total revenue. Cutting prices below P1, the likely reaction of other firms is to follow the price reduction. Demand is likely to be relatively inelastic there's going to be little benefit in terms of extra sales generated by cutting the price. And therefore, total revenue will be unlikely to change very much whatsoever. We can see the difference in the quantities indicated on the output axis. If demand is relatively elastic following a price rise and relatively inelastic after a price fall, we create the kink in the oligopolist's demand curve. In other words, the average revenue curve. And we can see that highlighted by the red area on your screen. We can take this one step further and we can look at the marginal revenue curve. 
the marginal revenue curve is always twice as steep as the average. And therefore, there will be two marginal revenue curves if AR is kinked. We find a vertical intersection at quantity Q1 indicated by the green dashed line on your screen. We have to bear in mind that the two curves don't actually intersect. Now, we can ask the question, is there an equilibrium? In the diagram here, the marginal cost curve cuts through any point in the gap in the marginal revenue curve. One of the key predictions of the model is that prices will be sticky. Even when there's a change in marginal cost of supply, and this is assumed that firms are profit seeking. Now, the kink demand curve model assumes that other firms will follow if prices are cut. Firms will not follow if prices rise. So a key idea in an oligopoly and the kink demand curve model itself is price rigidity. So in an oligopoly, firms have price send power, but they may be reluctant to use it. Rivals are unlikely to match price rises and rivals are likely to match a price fall. If a firm is settled on one price, there may be little point in changing it. Even if costs change, we often see rigidity and stability in an oligopoly. And what this does is places an importance attached to non-price competition and elements of competitive behavior. So firms are likely to compete using advertising, branding, special offers, for example. Now, a relative recent example to draw upon that you can link this theory to, in particular what I'm here focusing on is the importance attached to non-price competition is the car industry. So at the time of recording, which is July 2020, there were obviously just coming uh, emerging easing out of lockdown and car dealerships had a number of special offers on trying to entice customers back to showrooms because obviously they've had a lot of surplus they've obviously had a lot of stock sitting unsold for a number of months now if you were to visit the vw website you would have found that if you were to buy a new vw car such as a golf you would be able to take a, a three-month payment holiday when you were buying that car. So in effect, you wouldn't have to pay your first payment till round about um, October, November time, let's say. Now, conveniently, if you went on the Ford website, you would also find a similar offer in place. Now, why is that the case? Because firms are going to match the reactions of others. We said earlier that firms are interdependent. So, not only have we got this importance attached to non-price competition, but we've also got this linkage to firms matching the reactions of their rivals. So although I haven't been talking about price changes or prices being the same in that example to do with cars, we can see the interdependence involved within an oligopolistic industry. And I hope you found that example useful.